Hello, my name is Daniel Maduro. I'm going to be covering the Davis Bessie reactor vessel head degradation incident. This is the Davis Bessie nuclear power station. It is located in Oak Harbor, Ohio. It's operated by First Energy Nuclear Operating Company. Its initial operating license was issued in April 22, 1977. Its license may expire April 22, 2017, although the Davis Bessey is currently seeking license renewal for an initial 20 year term. It is a pressurized water reactor with a thermal net megawatts of 2817. The type is a Babcon Wilcox raised loop. A little background in the incident the reactor pressure vessel heads of pressurized water reactors have penetrations for control rod drive mechanisms made from nickel based alloys. More specifically, it's alloy 600, which makes them susceptible to primary water stress corrosion cracking. August 3rd, 2001, the NRC issued NRC Bulletin 2001 01. This bulletin was issued in response to the recent discoveries of cracked and leaking, leaking alloy 600 vessel head penetration nozzles including control rod drive mechanisms and thermocouple nozzles at four PWRs. This raised concern about the structural integrity of vessel head penetration nozzles throughout the PWR industry. So February 16, 2002, Davis Bessie Nuclear Power Station's energy refueling outage, which included inspection and penetrations in the reactor pressure vessel head in response to the NRC Bulletin 2001-01. March 6, 2002, while identifying the cause of displacement of the control rod drive mechanism, maintenance workers discover a large cavity in the reactor pressure vessel head after removing boric acid deposits from the RPV head. The wastage area of this cavity was approximately the size of a football, with the remaining thickness of 3 eighths of an inch, which was attributed to the stainless steel cladding of the reactor pressure vessel. This discovery did not result in any reactor coolant pressure boundary leakage, but it had the extreme potential for a loss of coolant accident. This is the brown boric acid deposits around the reactor pressure vessel head flange. If you notice, boric acid is normally white in color, including the deposits. It's the oxidation that causes it to turn brown. Here's the region of degradation on the reactor pressure vessel head. If you notice, the penetrations are from the control rod drive mechanisms. And this is a picture of the degradation after the cutout. If you notice, the wastage area is about the size of a football, and the remaining thickness of the 3 8 inch cladding of the stainless steel. The cladding withstood the primary pressure over the cavity region during operation. However, cladding is not designed to perform this function. All right, NSU order EA 03009. I'm going to be covering this order. Uh, the NRC issued this order EA 03009 provided guidance on establishing interim inspection requirements for reactor pressure vessel heads at PWR reactors. The experience at Davis Bessie and discovery of leaks and nozzle cracking at other plants reinforced the need for more effective inspections of RPV head penetration nozzles. Problems related to primary water stress, stress corrosion cracking have increased as plants have operated for longer periods of time. Previous inspections of RPV head only included a visual check for leakage on the insulated surface of the surrounding area. Here's the equation to determine the required inspections for each refueling outage. The equation determines the susceptibility category of each reactor vessel head to primary water stress corrosion crack cracking related degradation. This is represented by the value of total effective degradation years or EDY. So 
primary water stress, corrosion, cracking, susceptibility categories. We have high, which is plants with a calculated value of EDY greater than 12, or plants with a reactor pressure vessel head that has experienced cracking in a penetration nozzle or J-groove weld due to primary water stress, corrosion, cracking. Moderate, plants with a calculated value of EDY less than or equal to 12 and greater than or equal to 8 and no previous inspection findings requiring classifications is high. Low. Plants with a calculated value of EDY less than 8 and no previous inspection findings requiring classification is high. For a high susceptibility, the frequency will be every refueling outage. Bare metal visual, visual examination of 100% of the rectal pressure vessel head surface along with ultrasonic testing of each rectal pressure vessel head penetration nozzle if leakage has occurred into the interference fit zone or eddy current testing or dye, penetra dye penetrant testing of the wetted surface of each J groove weld and reactor pressure vessel head penetration. Moderate susceptibility. The frequency will be inspection shall be performed such that at least one of the requirements are performed each refueling outage so that each requirement is performed at least once over the course of every two refueling outages. Again, we'll have the bare metal visual examination of 100% of the rectal pressure vessel head surface and ultrasonic testing or eddy current testing. Low susceptibility, the bare metal visual examination of 100% of the rectal pressure vessel head surface the frequency at least every third refueling outage or every five years, whichever occurs first. Ultrasonic testing of each rectal pressure vessel head penetration nozzle or eddy current testing or dye penetrant testing of the wettest surface of each J group weld and rectal pressure vessel head penetration. And these require a frequency of at least every four refueling outages or every seven years, whichever comes first. And after these inspections, there is a required report which shall be submitted detailing the inspection results within 60 days after returning the plant to operation. Now for every refueling outage, there is a requirement that you have a visual inspection of boric acid deposits. If any boron deposits are discovered on the reactor pressure vessel head, inspections of the affected reactor pressure vessel head surface and or penetrations shall be performed prior to returning the plant to operation. A report shall be submitted de detailing the inspection results within 60 days after returning the plant to operation. In conclusion, despite the plethora of available information, operating experience, and engineering analysis, this incident still occurred. Now with more stringent requirements for inspection in place, the likelihood of this incident occurring should remain minimal. This incident was and is preventable. Thank you.